What is up guys? 70 Savage here coming at you today with a, another video. Today we are going to talk about six different things you can do to make your van winter camping capable. So two years ago I moved here to Lake Tahoe and I realized pretty quickly that it's a whole different ball game if you want to be able to camp in your van in below freezing conditions. So I spent the last two years kind of experimenting with different things and I finally think I have all the stuff in this van to have a comfortable seamless like minimum stress winter camping experience. I'm going to talk about them from the simplest to the most complex with the last one being my personal favorite kind of feature. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so thing number one is actually the diesel heater that heats the inside of the van while you're staying in here, but I'm pretty sure all you guys already know about that one. I got a couple of videos on the channel and a link to the diesel heater that I prefer in the description below. Let's move on to thing number two. Thing number two is heat tape on all of the piping that runs on the outside of the van. The idea here is that when it's Friday and I'm hopping in the van to go on a weekend camping trip, I can just come in here, flick on the heat tape switch, and all of the heat tape starts heating up, the pipes start to thaw, and by the time I'm camping and the duration of while I'm camping, the pipes stay thawed so that I can just use the water system like I normally do. The heat tape itself is actually this special 12 volt heat tape that runs right off of your batteries in the van so that you don't have to turn on your inverter. I basically just took that heat tape and did a wrap every like six inches or so around all of the pipes on the outside of the van. And then after I finished that, I took some regular old pipe insulation that you can get at the hardware store and put that on the outside of the heat tape in the pipe to try and trap all of that heat inside of the insulation. I think if I were to do this build all over again, I would run all of the pressurized freshwater pipes on the inside of the van and then only run the minimum possible pipage on the outside of the van, which is basically just like your gray water lines that need to drain downwards. The 12 volt heat tape that I use taps out at around 70 degrees with the uh, testing that I've done so far. That being said, once it hits 70 degrees, it still kind of stays on and the stuff uses so much amperage. So I don't want that to be running perpetually. So I did add a little heat controller right at the start of the circuit that has a temperature sensor on it. And when the pipes get hot enough, the electricity to the heat tape turns off. So uh, I'll put a link to the heat controller, the 12 volt heat tape, and some pipe insulation in the description below. Thing number two is very similar to the heat tape, but for the tanks themselves. Um, so I actually have two different tank heating pads, one on the freshwater tank and one on the gray water tank. The gray water tank is outside, so it definitely needs to be heated if you ever want to thaw it out in case you need to drain it or something. My freshwater tank is on the inside of the van, but having a heating pad on that freshwater tank kind of just makes it so that I can heat that thing up faster uh, when I'm starting on my camping trip for the weekend or whatever. Quickly interrupting from the editing booth, I left something out that's very important to mention at this point in the video. I leave water in my freshwater tank in between camping trips and I just let it freeze up. Uh, as long as you don't fill the water tank all the way to the top and you have a uh, like depressurizer tube built into your water tank system. You could just let the water freeze in there and it makes it a lot easier not needing to fill the tank up in the middle of the winter when you start on a trip. And if I decide to go skiing or something where I'm not in the van for, you know, eight hours out of the day, uh, I can just leave that fresh water heat pad on and it'll keep that water as water and not have it turn to ice. The nice thing about these heat pads is they have a temperature controller built into them. So they're super simple to wire up, just literally positive, negative views you're good to go. I'll put a link to the tank heating pads that I used in the description below. For number three, we actually have something that's not water related at all. Uh, it's actually two heating pads that I have installed on the outside of my battery bank to preheat the batteries. If you have lithium batteries, you cannot charge those batteries when it's below 32 degrees. These days you can buy batteries that kind of heat themselves, but I bought my batteries before those existed and uh, you can also save a lot of money by doing this. I basically just bought the exact same tank heating pads that I have attached to the water tanks, but instead I just bought little sheets of aluminum and attached the heating pads to the sheets of aluminum and then mounted the heating pad attached to the aluminum to the sides of my battery bank. Only reason I didn't stick the heating pads directly onto the batteries is I didn't want that like sticky residue 
all over there and there's gaps in the batteries. It just, it felt too messy. Plus you get the added benefit of a nicer heat distribution when you attach it to an aluminum pad. But having the ability to preheat the batteries is really nice because when I'm in the driveway, like the night before I go on a camping trip, I can turn the battery preheating on. I can plug the van in and pre-charge the batteries to 100% before my camping trip. Also, I guess in theory, I could just leave that preheat battery thing on like all winter. It would keep the batteries at 65 degrees. And then I could just leave the van plugged in so that the batteries never discharge. I already have links to the water tank heat pad in the description below, but I'll add another link to the aluminum sheet that I mounted them to. Thing number five, which I think I'm back on track with this numbering now, uh, is actually water related as well. It is a low pipe drain system. What I mean by that is I just put ball valves at the lowest point of the fresh water pipes so that I can open those valves and have all of the water drain via gravity out of the lowest point. I did get a little bit fancy and I put electronic valves on those low drain points so that I can just flip a switch from inside the van to do all of my winterization for the pipes. Last year, I literally just had a manual hand open ball valve and that worked pretty dang well. The idea is that when you get back from your camping trip and you need to winterize the van, you just go outside, you open those ball valves to let the water drain, and then you can like open your faucet so that all of the water just drains out. And it does a pretty good job at getting most of the water, but the next thing is where the secret sauce comes in. By the way, I will put a link to the auto close electronic ball valves that I used for the low drain point in the description below. So in order to get all of the water out of your water lines, people will typically take like an air compressor, put it at the start of their water system and then blow all of the water out. That's way too inconvenient and I'm way too lazy for that type of solution. I don't want to have to do that every single time I get back home from a winter camping trip. So I came up with something that I'm super excited about and I think I might have invented. Uh, not actually sure about that, but I call it the uh, dual valve pump primer air flow thingy. I actually don't really know what to call it or have a good name for it, but how it works is I basically have two ball valves. I used electronic ones for this as well, and they're attached right at the output of the water tank. So where the water tank goes into the water pump, I have two ball valves. Ball valve number one closes to shut off water coming from the tank. Ball valve number two just has a pipe to the air, like to just a pipe with the end cut off. Um, and it opens when the one attached to the tank closes so that when I turn on the water pump, it just sucks in air using that pump's auto prime feature and pumps the air through the system, effectively blowing out all of the lines. What this means is that I can open the low point drain valves and then I can flick on this auto blowout function thingy. And then I can turn on the water pump for about 15 to 30 seconds and I have a completely winterized water system. I might be a little bit overly excited when it comes to this feature, but for me, it is just so freaking convenient when I get home from a long trip and I'm tired and I have to unpack the whole van that all I have to do to winterize the van is like this 30 second to one minute routine. And at this point, with all the ball valves being electric, I don't even have to get out of the van. So lastly, I have kind of a bonus tip. It's not necessarily a whole new feature, but it's a combination of the last two features that I talked about that adds even more convenience to the overall winterization process when you get home from the camping trip. So that auto winterization feature that flicks the two ball valves open and closed, um, I have that on what's called a DPDT switch. I think it's dual pull dual throw or something. What it basically means is that the switch has three positions. When I flick the switch all the way to the left, it activates the winterization mode. So it closes off the water tank and opens up the air. When I flick it to the middle, it just cuts all power at all. It doesn't do anything, leaves the, the valves exactly where they were. And when I flick it to the right, it does the opposite of flicking it to the left. So it opens the water tank back up and closes off the air valve so that the water system works like normal. Now, I was also incredibly excited when I came up with this idea of using two different types of motorized valve on one switch to have a full complete winterization system. Um, and maybe it's not that exciting to you, but uh, too bad for you. You just had to listen to all of that anyways. I'll put a link to both types of motorized valves in the description below. And that actually summarizes all six features plus my bonus tip 
for how I'm going to camp in this van in the winter. Uh, this is winter number three, so hopefully we've perfected it, but there might be some things that I change next winter. If you guys have ideas of other convenient features that I can add or things that I should change to make these features better, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. Hopefully you learned something and you're gonna use some of these features in your van as well because camping in the winter is a freaking awesome way to camp. There's nobody else out there, lots of snow, and uh, you can go to places that uh, you really have all to yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.